Hello, well, welcome back again. My name is Samadhi Chile, and as I mentioned in our last video, I said I'm going to that in our next video, which is this one, I'm going to show you how to use flex and grid, including what we have learned from week one to week four to learn how to build a Figma design like this. So this is the project. This is your first project. So I've I've used this project to teach you before. So this is it. This is your first project. And today I'm going to show you now that we have learned flesh and grid and other important CSS. CSS properties to show you how you can build exactly what you see on a Figma file. So this is a Figma file and this is the desktop version. Then this is the mobile version. So I've built this section one. So from here to here and including the responsiveness, but not exactly how it should work. For example, this close button, it has to do with states um, with no language JavaScript. So I just use a hover drop down. But apart from that, I, I viewed exactly what is here. So let me show you the output. So this is the output of the one I built. So you see. So it's just the section one. And if I minimize, you see, if I over, you see how it looks like. So this is what we are going to be building in this video. So I'm going to walk you through how to build exactly what you see on in Figma design. So please try to understand the principle and how to get resources from a Figma design like the images, the CSS, and and other stuff. So and how to do your the markup. So we've learned all those all these things before. So we'll be applying it. In this video so if I span this here you will see how it is so I tried it I try to make it as responsive as possible so it only has two states the mobile and the responsive part so so that is it so if i come if i use this mobile view so you see how it looks like so this is exactly what we are going to build using this figma design guide so let's begin So I'll, I'll close this because it has a practice file. Then we have this big, we have this basic setup. So let me make this one portfolio two. Then open this on live server. Then maybe I should drag that one, keep it here. So this is it. So before you start to build a Figma file like this, you have to first of all analyze it. So if I zoom in a little bit closer, you are going to notice that 
enough by on this section one they are they're like inside one box and they have a common background so let's try to achieve that first so if i go to my if i go to my body tag so i'll have my main so i put my main then i'll have my ah, and then i will be inside the main inside the section so footer so if i save this i'll have this good so now i think let me zoom this a little okay so now the next thing that you need to do is to find out the maximum width of this figma design file and you have to switch to your your developers mode and don't worry i'm i'm going to give you a login detail that you can use to access this file so just pay attention so how do we know the maximum width of this file so if i so i'll just tap outside this box just double tap and scroll down so you so you notice that the maximum width is is 120 rem so i'll go back to my index so i'll put my html say max width 120 rem So I can also the font size, font size, default one should be one in. So that's the maximum width. The next, we want to get this section, we want to get this section one background. So let's, so let's see if was provided see I'm I'm not able to get access to it so we're going to sorry look for a way to include that design so if you cannot get it here you scroll down here check Let me preview okay so i have this i have this background here that means I, I can get this color so to download this background i'll tap this and it will show me this portfolio one and you should set your browser to ask you where to download by default if you give it a default if if you if you just give it a default location then that means it always download to that place and you copy to your working folder and that will not be nice so if you are using Chrome. So let me show you quickly. So you go to your settings 
and you look for download then you see this one here say ask where to save file before downloading so you check it so that it always asks you and that is what it's doing for me so, so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to click this and i don't want it to download because that was my practice file so i want to show you so i'll use imgs instead of images so i'm going to save it there but notice that it's a zip file so you need to extract it so from my vs code i can open this folder and say review in explorer So what I'm going to do, I will use my normal PC Explorer and double click. I don't, I don't need to extract it. So I'll look for this. I'll copy it. Then I'll come back to images and paste. Then I'll rename it as section one and also bg then i can delete this so that's the process so if i come back now i have this so next we go back to our vs code then inside our main section, we we'll have our section dot section one. So inside the section one, I will add a background image here. So let's. Do that so but before we add a background image you know it needs to have a width and the height so it already has a width so so let's get the height so let's get the height of that section one I think if I scroll up I think the height is 64 arrow em and the width is this so um, if if you notice now we give it the class of section one so I'm going to say dot section one then is this I can also put max width should be one twenty so let's give this a border first though You know is width and height range one pixel solid just use right so if I okay, I think let me check if I've connected my CSS external CSS no so I have to link it dot of our slash css and there's no css so we have this so now i can add the background 
image to this section one so background image url dot dot control slash slash we will come back to this folder imgs then this then we'll add our background repeat no repeat let's see how it looks like okay then background position right center let's see so it's a it is at the right and it's at the center but you notice it's not looking like this so we have to somehow reduce the size of the background image so background size so let's use so by default it is on 100 percent okay so let me use contain Contain is still the same thing. So, so use. Let me try seventy-five percent. And you notice it's not working. So seventy-five percent, one hundred. So this one is for the width, and why this one is for the height. So you, so you notice it's not working correctly. So I think one reason is for the height. Of this and we have to give this so let's reduce this height to 53 let's see let's reduce it to 43 see to pour so 43 let's make this so so you notice that this will have to be a trial and an error process until you get it so for a rejob design all you have to do is to add a comment and you tell the US to please find a way to to join or to give you this background as a picture so it will make your work more easier so together done fast I'll just look at my practice CSS and we use 65 we use 65 percent 
and the mean height and the height was in VH so I just converted it and it looked nice so this is what we need to add and this is what we need to add so let's do that so that we don't waste time so this is 65 and this is 95 V white so if we do that see it looks nice So if I minimize this, so you see how it looks very, very nice. Okay, so now the next thing that we want to do now is to get this background. So if I double click this, you notice that I have the background here so if I click so I'll go to background color and I paste this so you notice that has been added but there are two there. I think let's see if it's a lighter one. Think they are the same okay so you should have we have gotten this now so the next thing for us to do now is to add this our nav bar inside this section so let's do that so inside my section one uh, a nav bar then i'll use my ul now before we do the markup, let's analyze. Now if you notice this this logo here stands on its own and the rest of this stands on its own. So if we are using the list tag, this is going to be on one list and this is going to be on one list. So let's do that. So I have list and I'm going to have an image here yeah, I'll have my logo so we're going to give this a class of logo then these two of logo the next move to this and we'll have our anchor tag now they are going nowhere tab so the first one if you double tap on this you come here it is about me so i'll paste that shift or arrow down one two three so the next one is skills so let's copy this one portfolio and this one is skills and this one is contact me but now you notice that this contact me has a different styling so there's need for us to give it a class contact
So we are done with the markup. So if we view that on our page to, to look like something like this. <coughs> Excuse me. Sorry, let me clear my truth. Okay. So, so let's get this image or, or this logo image. So if I double tap, and I scroll down, double tap, tap. So now I get access to this and if i export now i usually export icons as svg because it makes them more smaller but for big images you use png okay so we have this process again so i will not be repeating this process because it takes long so but i'll be doing it once in a while so let me just do this last one so if i save this to my images so i'll go back to to my images folder i'll double click it I'll double click it again double click and I'll copy it then I'll come back to this file and I'll paste Then I can delete this because I don't I don't need it again. So this is, this is just the process. Whereas there are some files that don't come in zip format, so it will just it will just come like this, and you can use it directly. So for anyone that comes in zip format, I'll not be doing. I think I'll show you twice now. So it's still the same process. So you just keep repeating it okay so we've gotten that so let's add the image now so dot and forward slash mgs and logo one so if i save move this we should have this now okay so the next nice thing for us to do is to make it look like this. So we have to apply Plex. So we'll go to our index. So dot section one now. Remember that it is the UL that is holding the airline that I want to flex and, and not the nav. So I think we we'll only have one UL so we can say UL display flex. align align items center 
justify content space between so let's see how it looks so this is how it looks so next we we notice that there's a bit of space from the top and there's it and there's, and there's a bit bit of space from the side so from the top we have 4.5 ROEM and from the left we have 17 ROEM so you you recall that from our markup it is a nav tag that is holding the entire nav and that is what we are we want to apply those spacing so dot section one nav so margin top 4.5 am yeah, padding left 15 min 17 rem I think there's a place I put dot. Where is that dot coming from? Before the logo. Okay, we'll, we'll find that out later. Okay, so, but you notice that Rhyme is not a responsive, so we are going to change this. Sorry, not here. We are going to change this. To view it so one rem is about 16 pixel and one view it is about 15 uh, uh, I mean 15 pixels so they are almost the same unit but only that the view width is more responsive when you have to deal with the width shrinking so We've gotten that space now, okay? This is dot coming from. Okay, we'll leave that for now. Can't find it. So the next thing that I want to do is this. So we'll, we'll come to this other ally here. I'm going to give it a class of. I can give it any class, but I'll just give it a class of group. Then we have to flex it so it will look like this so let's do that so next the section one dot group so there's only one group there then display flex Line items center, then justify. Then, so let's look at let's see flex and so this means it's going to flex it to the end but if you notice from here there is a bit of space but unfortunately we cannot get that space because of these extra positions 
so we just have to use our own default so uh, the padding right should be let's say to ROEM so let's see how that will look like okay then the gap so I think before we start doing that let's tie this first so for each of the anchor tag For each of the anchor tag, we have this. Tell the heights. And this, so. It doesn't have any padding here. So we can use. we can use the height to give it the pattern so let's copy this first so we can get dot section one dot group dot anchor tag so paste that Then let's copy this. So, but we are going to change this here to fit content. So that I have to because if you notice the width of this won't be the same with this and the width of this won't be the same with this. So they are not actually the same. Okay, okay, let's leave it like that first and see how it looks. Okay, so you see how it looks now. Then then this width because we want it to be responsive, let's change it to view width by default so that's going to Now, uh, what I mean that will limit the way we use our our, our media attribute is if I come here, sorry, not this mode yet. So you see, as as we shrink, stay still remains on this big then let's continue one after the other so the next thing we want to do is text decoration should be known so that is it so to look like this now then let's target the contact me dot section one dot group dot contact me so first of all I want to give it a text wrap of no wrap that is why 
it was shrinking before we'll fix this in a moment that is this thing that is that is going out so next we add the other css I copy this for the contact me and paste because that is is test properties or set properties. Then I need I need the styling for for the white background. So I'll target the other box. And get that it's hard to get a css property when there are so many other things like this astana this thing that is preventing us from from getting what we want as fast as we can so it, it will help if you can zoom in a little And to get this this shape is here but to get it so you just have to be patient let me right click Yeah, it's here, it's here, but we just have to get it. Okay, I think let me target that box. Okay, so you can use this method. Wow, what a relief. All these distractions. Yeah, so we'll copy that and paste. So it, it just something to remember if you can if you, if you can't target it, an item. In Figma, then see if you can use this other drop down here and you get it. 
so you see that all the while it was the contents that i was able to click but not the right angle because i know that the right angle holds this other stuff so that is something to remember so if we save that you see how it looks like so i think that width we gave it i think in here we can increase the width so the width is actually this nine on this so let's do that for here i think we left it like that yes we did no we didn't leave it like that yeah. So that's why it's shrinking. But now I see it's too big. So this is too big and it will spoil the design flow so and remember I don't have this background image so we have to make it fit the fit so again enough for us not to do trial and error just look at this Okay, so we use max width. No, we're not for that. No. Okay, so we use max width so it can shrink a little. So let's do that. Okay, so this is nice. The next look at the gap. So the gap between this box and this box is two oh six REM. So I'm going to put gap. That's a two REM. This looks nice. Okay, so the next one I want to handle now is this. The spacing is, is not that much. So let's not waste time. Yeah, I added a padding of 
this and this. 0 0.8 RPM or 1.5 RPM or around. So I just wanted to be sure. So is it good? But then, so point and we can get this from here. But you see this is not is is not provided so we just have to give that space so 0 0.8 rem one5 units so that will add the space to look like this now there's something else that I want to do. And that is, as user rings, we'll notice the breakpoint here, this, this design no longer looks good and we are going to remove it so that we don't have to do a media because if 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 we try to maintain this for so long you're going to like write a lot of css but if if it was if this and this was on a single image then you just use the full percent and you don't have stress about that so at from max width of 555 we want to remove this background image and reset this so let's do that so at media on screen and max Ten five five pixel. Then dot the section one. Background image on set. So on set means to to remove something that you set before. So do that. This is off. Then at this point, don't know how small or or how big the person's device will be. We want to change this anchor tags to want to change the color to black. Or well, let's leave it as white because. By the time we we are moving to the responsive part, which is here, we will be adding a background image. But let's just add it for now. So section one now color should be white so we we'll have sorry not white black
so why isn't it working so let's oh i didn't pass through dot group dot group uncle tag think that should work my css was wrong okay so for now this is working okay so we are done with this nav we are done with this nav bar section we are almost done okay we are done with the desktop section so let's include the responsive section so in this responsive section you notice i have a hamburger menu and there is a drop down so we are going to get this we are going to get this new logo which is white so if you tap and click on export you are going to see it here and as your spot you get a logo but i've already done that so i'm going to use this we will not waste that and if you notice in the mobile view the nav bar height the nav bar now has a height and the background color of black so if you scroll down so we just leave the width and just so let's get the breakpoint for our media attribute so we want a seven a 740 pixel it should change to the desktop to the mobile view because if we go if we go any closer you see it's too close and that is not nice so from 740 so from 740 so i'll just do shift alt arrow down now change this to 740 740 then go on the nav dot section one now the height should be don't worry about that then the background color should be black then we want the group to disappear dot section one dot group display display none so in this how it looks like now okay so next thing that that also need to do is let's say the margin top 
I will give it before the onset so that to make it to to go to the top just like this so you see now it's taking shape the next we have to make this one show and this one show so what I'm going to do is in the markup I'm going to give this a class of logo desktop so this is the logo that will show on the desktop so I'll come down then shift alt arrow down then the logo that will show on the mobile So that one, I'm going to get it from, not from this folder, from images. Which one? I'll, I'll try both of them. So if I see it. I think it's not that one. It's logo two. So it's showing now. Then you remember that this had a padding left. So we have to remove that because according to the design here, the pattern left now is 1.88 arrow here. So but first of all, let me that's something now if you notice if I go to my desktop view you see I have to logo showing so we have to we have to tell them when each of them will show so we don't want the mobile one to show on the desktop view and you know any above here is text top view so anything that we are not putting inside here yeah is the real mobile view so I'm going to add it here dot section one logo dot logo mobile should be display none so that's it's going to make it is it's, it's going to prevent it from showing so let's see why it's not showing No more bike, more bike. Okay, so so that has worked. Then in the desktop.
in the mobile view so i'll just copy this proceed then in the mobile view i want it to show which is display flex and i'll paste again then the desktop will not be displayed no so do not show so that has been taken care of now so we can move to this point then you notice that the logo now is at the top so we have to we have to target a if you recall we have a class of logo here so i'm going to so that section one dot logo display flex align items center and justify and justify content center so that didn't work so I think it's from that should be from From the UL. So let's look at our UL where we studied before. I'll give it a border. One pixels. Solid. Right. To know why it's not at the center. So okay so there are two reasons now and we'll fix them so so one of the reasons why it's not the center because is the height is not the same within our height so we are going to set the height and we are going to set this so let's move this out now to come back here. So in our responsive mode dot section one well height inherit so let's see if this will work because enough bar uh, has a height so it has inherited it okay the next the logo we say padding not the logo is the nerve we'll say padding left on set so not on set to to one point one one point eight eight just as we saw here So one point eight eight REM. Okay. So that has worked. Okay. 
So the next thing for us to do now is to make sure this this hamburger menu here appears. So it then means we have to go back to our markup and add another list. Then we are going to add image dot and forward slash image then I already have it this menu the menu so uh, I'm going to give this a class of menu so what will be the output of this now You notice it will be showing here but if I go to my desktop view it still shows oh 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 so now I know why this thing is showing why is there always a dot black dot Oh. Now I remember, I need to remove the list type type. So let's go back to our CSS very very at the top. So here we say list style type known. And I should clear that nice so next we have to go back to I forgot that but I didn't allow it to bother me because I know it will be figured out later okay so dot section one dot menu should not display on the desktop mode so it should be displaying on so on the mobile view dot dot menu dot menu dot section one be display flex then just the same if you check here you see that the in the padding to the right is 1.27 rem so let's add that Then write 1.27 RPM. So if we do that, see now we have this. So nice. So the next thing that we are going to do now is to make sure this drop down comes when we hover on it and then style it then we'll now move we'll now move to this to this other section then after we finish that we'll now come back to here and we'll end it hello so let's now add this feature to our hamburger menu so that when we hover over it to bring out this drop down because for now we've not learned uh, this in javascript so 
we cannot add the state here if we click this it will show you it will show this drop down then if we click this it will close it and return back to the state so we'll just use the css over for now so this if you just type how to use css drop down on hover it will look for the w3 school option and click it it, it will take you to this point i've been using this often in my in, in my previous classes so if you open to so if you go back you see what i type there css drop down on hover so if you type this you get that so if you click the first one you get that so next we can click on the try it yourself so i'll get access to the full code so we just need to understand their markup first and uh, from their markup we need to have these various css so i'll go back to my code to my html where do we want to add add a markup add all these things so this one holds the menu drop down so we'll, we'll give it a class of the drop down so let's close this i have some room then let's break this a little break this a little then next nice, if you go back you notice that it has a drop down button so we've missed something so this one is meant to be here ctrl x so you can add it just space and add it here because this is one that is holding then the one that you hover before you to show is the one that you add is btn So that is what I'll add in a ETN. So that we just use exactly the CSS and we'll always type. Then we we'll need this div. So I just copy it to, to Ctrl C and come here. And to format my document. What did I choose? Last server again. No, 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 no. Format document with so use is pretty. Here. So I'll just copy what I need to show there. Change this control C and paste here. Place of a link and if you notice on this design this contact me button does not look any different so this is just a state of of when you hover <coughs> sorry so i have to remove this class now just leave it as empty so we have that now the next is to copy the CSS so I can scroll up now from me I put my cursor there then shift I tap this so I copy ctrl C therefore I want to save this then I go to my
go to my desktop view so this is a skill that you need to learn as a developer how to edit code and design it to fit the project that you're doing so it's something i've i've learned so this is has been done so if i over now you see <coughs> sorry it's out but this is not exactly what i want the one that we want here is is for it to be full screen and not this but at least it's close to what we want so we have to now apply our knowledge of css to make it the way it work to look the way we want it to look like so that is what you're going to do now so but at first i need to remove this green background this green background there because it's not in the design so let's do that right away so anywhere we see green background just comment it out and these are the two places so i can add here drop on on over then I can scroll down to where it ends and add end is I'm troubleshooting I know that it that is the start and that is the end so if I save this see that is gone so in order for us not to in order for us to make it look the way it looks go to this content we are going to give it a position of fixed and uh, if you have a width of 100% So let's see if then before we do that then we are going to give it do it anywhere do so let's put it here left Sorry. should be zero R E M. then the top should be the same so like the top so let me zoom in a little so you remember that this nav bar here had a height that height was three points this rem so i'm going to give it i'm going to give it to this this drop down content the height should be that should be that unit so if we save go back see how it looks like now nice so the next thing that, that i want to do now is to make sure the background is exactly what we have here so if i tap this so you see that the background is there so i've copied the background so in place of this one that looks like white is that And that's is it. So 
so now I notice then we move to move here so let us double tap on this so for each of the of the anchor tag if you have the css properties so i'm going to remove the color I'm going to remove this and paste this that didn't copy So if I paste I'll have this But how do we make it space out like this? So Sorry If you look at this It has a height So let's give it a height and we see. So if for each of this anchor tag could give it a height. Just wanted the height. Yeah, in order for it to be at the center, we need to add display. Okay, let's see first. So, in order for it to be at the center, let's add display flex. Reflex. Align items center justify tent center. So now you see it's not the center. Then we'll now add on hover the background should be. F, F, F. So this is it. Body color has to be black. So color. So you see now it's not it is not working the way it should. Okay. So now we are done. We just drop down menu. So you see it looks good. So next 
we are going to we are going to now move to 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 this markup now so I don't want this video to be too long we have already passed one hour so I don't want it to reach to pass more than two hours and 30 minutes but at the same time I want you to understand what I am doing so I'm happy with the progress we've made so far so we are out of the nav the nav section now so we'll give this a division of line one the class name does not matter it's just a way to group things so inside this line one so let's analyze now so inside this line one we have two boxes so this is box a and this is box b so the box a holds this and the box b holds this image and this text here so inside box one we have box one box two box three and box four and inside box four we have this so let's just do the markup using what i taught you so i will have dot box one that is box a shift what arrow down box b so the image there is going to be added by background image so just this will be dot p text and let's add the test so we've done the easier markup so i'll just copy the text and paste then we'll move to the box a inside it i have e dot one so the, so this is the first paragraph and i have the text there's something i just remember now if you notice the text on the desktop view isn't the same on the mobile view so let's capture that now so i'm going to group this control x dot text desktop so all the text for the desktop go here so here it says i am i paste then p dot two So I copy that, paste, p dot three, so I have to zoom in a little to, to capture that. Content UI designer. And that's all there. I have so in in my mobile view. So I have mobile. So let's capture that so that we know this time. So my name is Thomas. Um, 
new developer so you copy that then this one there is no text there it just an image and we are going to add a background image with that and that is all so next we can continue with our our desktop so i have icons so after this i have dot icons so i have so this icon here putting the name so i'll just use icon one icon two so dots icon one dot i so it then means if i want to style all the icons i, I can use this i then if i want to style this one i can use this one that is is unique so this one is icon three. Sorry, excuse me. And this one is icon two. So we are done with the markup. So now let's add. We're not going to use an image tag so that we can easily switches so i've showed you two ways now is that if it's is that you use the icon you add the you add the icon with the image tag and that will be fine but if you observe that the icon looks differently on the desktop on a different view like on the mobile view then it is easier for you to change it using CSS but if you want to still use HTML you still use CSS but you just have to do a similar thing that I did here so you create a markup for the mobile and create a markup for the for the desktop okay so those are two uh, the two different approach so using the css method means that you write just more of css without no markup but if you're using the css you just write more of the, the css i mean sorry if you're using the css you're going to write more of the css and you don't need you might not need to have a markup but if you're using the markup you still have the markup and you look you just use small css so it's good for you to understand it too because one may work where the other fail so so let's save this and see how it looks like so we are working on our mobile view so to be here so excuse me so we need this to split into two so we are going to use grid you can use flex but just want to use grid so I'm going to come here. I will name this. Line one. Style. Style. So. So. Dot section. One. Dot. Line one. So we are going to give it 
display grid then grid free template columns repeat auto view auto fit mean max as you three hundred pixel one F R then to get a view of the two boxes you can have sorry dot section one dot box a so let's give it a border one pixel solid right so you use border most times to know if you actually targeted it that correctly or to have a view of your working space so if i view this now oh, it looks like this okay this is nice so if we come to the sorry if i over here and go to the top a little let me zoom in so you see that i have a margin top of 2.13 rem so i can add that here margin top 2.13 em so that will give it the margin top so that it will not stay at the top there good so next we want this we want the content here to be aligned here because that's how it looks like here so i'm going to give it if you recall the distance from here to here is a system point this REM but you know if you are dragging this like this you don't want it to you don't want it to be fixed so we use view it instead of the REM remember they have the same unit so I'm going to use going to use padding left 15 view it so it's it's almost looking the same and see as I stretch it looks the same okay so next You notice that you know that this container here has a height a height so if we screw up let's see if we can get that height the height of the line one so you see we have a height of 54 0.8 rem so i can copy this so we're going to sorry, excuse me use the grid auto rows and we use a mean max of 34 rem auto so if it is greater than 34 rem 
then it should increase so with that we have something this Let me just confirm the unit I use so that we don't waste time. Okay, this is still the same. Sorry. Okay, I think this unit is overflowing. Okay, so yes. I think so I, I think I have I should not worry about that for now. Yes, I'll, I'll find a way to make it it should be in sync with this. She didn't go out of that. Let's see on the big screen. It's still the same thing. Okay, so let me reduce this. Well, let's leave it first. Let's continue with the rest. So we need to go to back to that inspect mode because that's how we size it. So next, we have to start styling this. We have to start styling this. So I'm going to I'm going to target this. That is for the P1. So this is going to be dot section one dot p dot one I paste and I'll change this to left. So if we save we'll have something like this. Now you notice that my desktop view is still showing, so I will not handle that. The text desktop and the text mobile. So let's handle that. So the text desktop. So what I'm going to do now is, sorry. So I'm going to, now that our responsive mode yet. So 
dot section one dot this and that this should be for the mobile should be display one so that will make it switch off okay good next we will need our mobile so I'll just copy that. So I'll use the way I type. So here I should be a mobile. I close the bracket. So I'll copy this Ctrl C. And the text top should be display no so that is it so if I scroll down now it should be displayed now And the mobile should display flex. So if we go to the mobile view, you see. So we've done that. Okay, so now that we've done that, we can continue with this. So I copy for this. At section one. I think in, in order to prevent a repeat in the in the mobile or let's just continue. Let's just continue. But what I wanted to add was so that the CSS for So this will not affect the other. If I add this for, if I always add, always add my, always add my tech desktop to this, then it will make it look nicer. So if I save, I'll see have the same output. But now there is something else that we, that we want to do. <coughs> Sorry. There is something else that we want to do. And this should be on the, the desktop view. If you notice, there is a distance between this high I am to this to this box here and it's twelve point eight seven arrow here. So let's imagine top 
12.87 ROEF. Now, because of this, it's not going to affect us in the mobile view. So let's check. So you see now it's down. Then we have that now. So next we come here, copy for this, and I'll just re replicate the same thing. So shift out arrow down, change this to two. And I copy, I write everything and paste. So if I do this, I will have this. But notice that the text is wrapping. So, so text wrap to no wrap. So that should fix it. But you see that the font size is too big. So let's reduce it to 3.5 and the text should be left no center. So now you see it looks good. So as we stretch. So you see that behavior. So that means we, according to the design, this should be like a separator, so it should not meet until it, it switches to the next mode. So I'm going to change so let me reduce it to three point. 5.2 Tinder is okay, so yes, so let you leave it at three. I think the error is not much, so. The fraction is not much. Okay, so we have it at that, but we notice that there is a margin top between this and this. So if I highlight this, it's 3.38 REM. So margin top. 3.38 RPM. So if I do that, I will have this. So why is this guy still showing here? So let's make sure that it's fixed. No display, none. Then in the Text desktop, which is this, 
my name is Thomas. So I think it's this the text mobile should not be showing on the desktop. And I can see that here. Thought I did that before. And to see. Docs mobile should be displayed. Okay. So, excuse me. So the next one now is to style this. So I copy it so I'll shift out arrow down. This one will be three. Is this let's save let's okay. So that is it. I need to reduce the font size to view width and this to two. Three point five. So I think it's not perfect. Five point five, let's see. No. I think this is better. So I sh four point zero. Three point eight. The next thing now is for the logos, that is the icons. So remember, remember that because of the fact that we don't have this background here, that is this slash as an image, the exact height of this section was reduced so in terms of height we'll not get exactly the same design so to 
Die nächste ist die Tagetauer. Ist die Target. Our BTNs, which is the icons, that is icons. So dot section one dot box a dot icon sorry. So let us give this a margin top of two RPM. We're not going to use the one there because we are short of height now. Then dot section one dot box. Dots icons dot i. So if you notice each of these box here, each of these boxes here, I'll zoom in a little. They have a default size or width. So each of the rectangle has this width and so I'll just copy that. So that's what I will give to this. So if I give it a border one pixel solid red. So you notice now we have our what? We have our boxes the nurse we need to flex we need to flex this so display flex and they should have a gap or a space which is about one point about one point nine four ten nine four one point nine four again then line items should be sent so if we save this now we will have something like this nice nice so the next thing for us to do now is to be adding the images. So this is our line one. Let me remove this one.
okay i think this is better so let's see Let me just take a look at this uh, my p1 i think it has to do with the heights i'm using there so i'm using 34 One, what is my margin top? Are you? So, I think I have to leave it like that. So just leave it like that before we just a distraction. Okay. So, I've already gotten a consumption in server use. 37 okay for the next 35 minutes we should be done okay so the next thing that we that I want to do now is to add these icons but if you notice each of these icon have a border so if you click on this right angle here see that the, it all has the same because that is for this this and this so i'll just click on this here and copy copy that and paste here so now i can delete this so if i save you see this Okay, so I think let me reduce the margin top. Let me use it to eat. Let me see my mark. Okay. So let's continue. So let me add the icons. So dot section one dot icons dot box a dot icon one so add our background image URL dot was slash Apple slash images so we use this at background repeat no repeat background size fifty percent background position center so 
if we do, do this we we'll have this icon one so what i will just do next is shift out arrow down one two so this is it should be for icon two and the next one is for github The next one is for LinkedIn. So if I save, this should be three. So I have done like this. Okay. So now it's less now add the background image for box 2 that's for box b Not box. section 1 dot box b I think i did that somewhere before so this look at this that this didn't work that was a mistake I don't think what I remove has any effect so we check so that's be sure okay so I don't think it's, it has any effect so I'll scroll down since I'm done with my box A so this one will be my box B so let me add background image sorry um, dot and power slash dot and power slash images then I've already gotten the image images user dot png then background repeat no repeat background position left so let's see what we have here now now I need to fix this problem because this box need to stop here Need to stop here. So let's go back. Let me just add the CSS first, then run size. is 75 percent 100 percent let 
So this is how it should look. So sorry, I still need to fix this now. There's a, there's a place where my mean height is not working. I think it's in this. Line. My section one. It's a mean height. So that has been the cause of the error. Okay. So the next thing we need to do now is this. Is we need to make this box show here. So record I will give it a text. A style of text now for we to for we to position this thing at the center here we need to use this position I remember this box here is box B so we need to give it a position of relative then this one of absolute so we can move it around box B so let's apply that now so I'll go to my box B scroll down Scroll down and give this a position of relative that's all. Then come here dot section one dot box B dot text position absolute. Then we we'll send it to the bottom. Bottom should be zero ROEM. Then it should have a width. So if you target this box now, it will give you the width. So that is the width. So we'll give it the width. Then it should have a background. And the font size so this is the font size and this is the this is the font styling or the text styling then it has a background so what is the background so if you scroll down Can assess the background. So I think we just use the background color of white. So if we do that now, notice that this guy will be placed here, but it need to be perfectly at the center. So we are still going to use position. So we are not going to use left then we'll use the calc function so this calc function can be used to add two css units like one rem plus plus 20 pixel or 20 percent plus one rem so you can use it to add you can use it to subtract so it just a CSS function so what I want you to do now is 
I'm going to say 100 percent space divided by 2 then minus the width of this so it, this means it will place it perfectly at the center so let's do that and you see it's perfectly at the center so as we stretch see it's responsive so so you are done with so how many minutes 12 minutes So the next thing for us to do now is is this is just to is just to handle the responsive part. It just handle the, the responsive part now that we've that we've gotten the mobile part. So, so now that we've gotten the mobile part, we can remove these lines. So we just comment it out. Comment this out. So it looks nice like this now. So the next thing that we are going to do now is to make sure we have exactly this in the mobile view so we've been able to to design the desktop view or navbar So now it's not remaining. It is not. So what is not left for us to do is to is to now make sure that the mobile view looks like this. So let's do that, and just wanted to just just wanted to add something. We need to remove this. We need to remove this red border, and we can make this. Background instead of white, it will be transparent. So, so let's do that. So let's look for our section one. I think so. That's for that one. Then the next change is to go to our box B. Instead of this white, give it a brown color of transparent. So it means if you take the color of the t-shirt, which is this. So it looks nice now. So what has happened?
what I remove. Get to this. Sorry. How can that be? Well, I'm not ready for that. For that error now, so to make it transparent. So there are so many ways to fix a problem. So we have that now. So now so what we want to do now is this we want to move to this background this so we need to get this image and if you double tap if you double tap yes so you see the image so you use the process i've shown you before to get it so let's scroll down what you got in the image so on our on our mobile view we now want dot section one so let's look at how we added we just say dot section one to look at we'll see background image url dot dot on four slash so we have our images then we have the background mobile Oh, which is this one? Sorry, background size. Cover it should be cover. Then background position. Then then. then background repeat and a background repeat you know repeat so if i do this i move to my To my mobile view now so you see this then according to the mobile application here there is no longer a box b so we are going to target box b dot section a dot box b should be display so if we do that to look like this so you see now so we're getting close then the next thing that we need to do now is the box a on this phone we need to unset we need to unset the padding so padding and set so even though it is the left right all of them to just remove them so if i do that it means this is going to to, to, to be perfectly at the center okay so now you recall that we have we have a text mobile so we're not going to start this now ctrl c ctrl c 
to see. So I'll come back here. And this is going to be box A. So now we have inside our box A. You can add display. Let's do step by step. So, yes, I need to target my inside my box A dot section one dot box A dot this text. Play flex flex direction shift column align sorry excuse me items should be center justify items should be center so if you take a look at it it will look like this That is nice, that is nice. So, the next thing that we need to do now is this. We need to bring this down a little so that where it stops is where this our style will start. So, we can, we can say Imagine top sorry will be let's use sixty-five view height so you see that is too far so let's use forty-five and this is better okay so the next thing that I want to do now is to style each of these boxes. So I will need, I will need to do this. So let me just copy this. Shift out. Arrow down. So I can remove this. dot one that means I'm targeting the first one so I'll just double tap this to get the CSS so I paste so if I save look at her It looks like so of course in order for us to have this same font style we need to add the font family so of course from here you notice that the font family is Avent Pro so to do that you just say Avent Avent Pro Google Font. So I've I've already done that before. Then you click on it. So I already have it. So Can't do that again but let me add another one which is a one that we have been using since which is 
Montserrat. Mont Montserrat Cogophone. I think I've used this one before. I think what Google Phone does is that once so I've used it before, but if you have not used it, you are going to see a get font here, then you just copy the the embedded font. It's not difficult. So let me look for So let me look for one that I've I've not used before. I think I've used Roboto. Uh, so I've not used this Roboto. So you so you, so you click on this get font. Then get embed code. And for me, this is all the fonts I've added. Unless I want to remove them, then it will show you how. So you copy this and add to to your html page and that is the index page and this is how you use it so i've already done that for for the font families so what i'm going to do now is come here so that i'll not waste time It done that so I'll just copy it like this to see and paste in my index page so that those fonts will be available okay so if I save notice now you notice from here just as we i i taught you that it's good to if you're using a custom form to use to add a website font so even google font is advising you that if you're using this one add this one so that in case this one does not load on time it will be showing this one the user might not spot the difference depending on the internet speed so what I'll do now is I'll go back to my index here and I'll add this. So that is it for that. Then the next thing now for me to do is to come back here and tap this. So I'll copy that. So shift shift alt arrow down. Change this to P2. And copy this. Copy this. So I'm going to wrap this in quotes. So if I do that now, I'll be having this. Okay, this looks nice. And the next thing now is Is this is this line divider here or this icon here? So let's do the same process. Shift or arrow down and change this to three. Remember that's what we thought. That's the class. And I remove this. So I need a background image. 
so that I will not waste time. Just copy this, Ctrl C. Paste here, then I'll look for the background image. Which has to, which is this separator by three. So if I save, I won't see that because I have not added width and height. So to do that, I'll click on this. You see. Just copy this to Ctrl C and add it here. So if I do that, I should be seeing the background image now. But now you notice there is a margin top if you zoom in a little. You zoom in a little. There's a margin top of 0.88 REM, so I'm going to give that here. Margin top of 0.88 REM. So that's good for us. The next is to centralize this and change the icon just like this. Good, good. So Next, we'll come back to this, our responsive mode dot section one dot box a dot icons. So justify. content to be center so that the box will be at the center okay nice nice the next let's add something now if you, if you notice on our desktop mode this box is too close now that we have some space so let's To that immediately. This is recording. Yes. So from here to here is seven point eight eight REM. So let's go back. You're tired of scrolling, you can control F and set that icons. Icons, so this is the first. An imagine top should be eight, so seven, eight, eight. So let's see how it looks like. So nice it looks nice but this is going to be inherited by the mobile view so it will be too far so come back a little so from here to here is 1.75 arrow em so I can hit to find nest and nest so which is that so the margin top of the mobile view is 
1.75 ROE. So if we do that, you see, it does not come to this shape. So next, we want to change each of these icons so that it will be showing like this and remove the box shadow and the background. So So next, what we are going to do now is to if we come back, if you if you recall in our markup we have the icons and I. So if we go back to our CSS, then now for you to move something in in the mobile view, it's good if. If you target it the way you targeted it on the desktop view, that way you end up just move, just updating what you want to update or removing the entire stuff. So I'm going to type here I. So this is it. So I'll just copy this. Control C. I'll go back to this point. Sorry, I don't need to go put dot first. So I'll paste and I'll say background on set box box shadow, which is the box shadow on set. So that means it to be like this. Nice, nice. So the next nice thing now is to change the background images to the white version. So that's what we are going to do lastly now. So we are going to so I'm going to type here dot icon one. So what I need to copy is from here. Control C and I will tap here to scroll down. to close okay good so I'll just change the background images this one is to add mobile where is this at mobile so two three so this one will be icon two this one will be icon three before forget. Then we we'll change this to Git Mobile, which is what I used to save the white version to Pentium Mobile. So if I save this now and go back, so you see it's all the white version. So I think this needs to go to the top a bit. Now if you look at from here to here, it's about 15 point 5 REM. So let's go back to I think that is our box A. So to our box A in our, in our responsive mode 
Let's reduce it to 35. While I'm using view height instead of the region because view height is responsive. So we have successfully done almost exactly what we saw there as except for this state. So this is what is required of you. This video is almost three hours. So it's not is a very fast process if you are used to it and the more you practice the more you understand so i implore you to please watch this video and follow it step by step understand when i have to use exactly what i see on the figma and when it fails, it then falls on you to remember what we've learned in CSS to not make it work. We start going against the Figma design because if you do that, you have not done a good job. So just try as, as much as you can to get as close to the Figma design and that's what we have done here. So just have only two, view, uh, two views which is the mobile and, and the desktop and to just demo that if I choose this S5 you see how it looks like now. So if I choose here you see it looks great. See here now, it, it looks great as I minimize, it looks great. So, this is what is expected of you. I hope I know this video will be of help to you to do all your project that is related to Figma. So, please learn to use this video to the practice. Now, you see that I did not introduce any new concept. It's all the things I taught you, except for some CSS units that we able to use like this on set and transparent. So if, if you need, if you find it difficult, it's good for you to just take a break and come back with a with a fresh perspective but if you aim for the best you always have the best so thank you very very much and see you in the next video